Meg, and good morning, everyone. Uh, as Meg pointed out, what I'm going to try to do is just give you some key takeaways from this report that uh, we just issued last week. Our chief economist, Kevin McNew, uh, did a lot of, lot of research polls and, and looked at the markets and actually put out a very good report. I would encourage each of you uh, to actually download this report and kind of read it. There's a lot of great information. You can do it several different ways. You can right now scan it. You can put your, your cell phone in front of the screen and, and scan that QR code to download the report. Really easy. Or you can go to your account at FBN, uh, go to the Analyze tab, and under Analyze tab, you're going to see it to the left-hand side, the reports where uh, uh, there's going to be new report releases where you can see the report. So I would encourage you, all of you, to download it. There's a lot of great information. I'm going to try to highlight some of the key takeaways that, that we have in that report. So, Matt, let's go to the next one. So if you think about there's four key takeaways, and, and I'll start with really the grain markets and, and what we believe uh, will we'll continue to see record highs in 2022. There's a couple of main reasons for that. Uh, there's there's first robust global demand, um, uh, and, and I'll walk you through, there's three main reasons for that. One is if you guys remember in 2020, China bought U.S. corn 750 million bushels in just three months, uh, where in the past decade they had bought 625 million bushels all combined. So in three months they bought more, more than the previous decade. That, that put the U.S. stocks <clears throat> in, a tough, in a tough spot, driving the first bull market. The second piece was ethanol prices jumped on elevated gas prices. Uh, and with some U.S. policies, you know, sending strong uh, signals for renewable diesel, we saw a jump in the soybean uh, future. And in 2022, we're seeing, you know, grain and oil prices, you know, basically do very little to kind of uh, uh, slow down the, the demand. So it is it is a very strong demand market uh, on, on the grain side of things. If you think about on the supply side, um, a lot of droughts across some major growing uh, areas of the world have put the supply you know, side of things really in, in a tough spot. In, 2000, uh, in 2020, the U.S. suffered you know, a lot of unexpected losses from drought and also had a wind damage in Iowa that reduced the average yield. In 2021, Brazil corn crop went down by 15%. In addition to that, you had Canada with a very widespread uh, losses of anywhere from 30 to 50 percent due to a historic drought that actually affected most of the crops uh, grown in Canada. And then in 2022, what we're seeing is two, two large uh, producing countries like Brazil and Argentina will likely see big losses uh, to their soybean crop primarily, and corn is still at risk due to significant droughts in part of their market. So, Strong demand on one side, you know, tight, you know, tight potential supply on the other side has actually kept the prices going for the last 18 months. And you add on top of that, you know, the Russian invasion of Ukraine, uh, which, you know, puts a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, prices, uh, um, put pressure on energy and commodity prices, given that those countries are, are big producers of crops, especially around wheat, barley, corn. Therefore, uh, it's yet to see the impact of that, but the longer that war remains, most likely, you know, there are going to be additional disruption in production as well as an ability to export out of, the, out of that country. So we believe you're going to continue to see high grain market prices, you know, for the foreseeable future. So that's, the, that's one piece. Take a look at that in the report. The second piece, as you look at acres, uh, we don't think acres are going to shift much um, because of these uh, fundamental grain prices. Uh, acres, you do have a little bit of softness in corn because of high fertilizer prices, but because Ukraine is a third larger exporter of corn, uh, it's yet to see how that's really going to impact, you know, the corn crop in North America. Um, you have a strong demand on the soybean side, uh, primarily due to this biodiesel. Uh, so you should see, we're seeing right now, and I'll share some of the data here on the survey we've done, you're seeing some potential increase in soybean acres and potential reduction in corn acres, but not significant because every every acre really matters right now, right? As, as the demand is strong and you have disruption in production, uh, 
every bushel matters on, on every acre. So um, I think farmers are gonna be looking to take advantage of that. The third key trend and takeaway is the biodiesel component of, of that's been really new of the market. Um, it not only provides short-term opportunity, and but also I think it becomes a long-term play as um, US biofuel policies have pivoted uh, lately it has given a big run away for the renewable diesel growth and actually setting off big investments in new soybean processing capacity. So that's really the impact long term. These capacities are being put in place. Some large companies, some large processing capacities uh, will be available here in the near future, and that's going to probably drive soybean demand. Uh, in addition to that, a sharp escalation in, in energy prices over right now in the next couple of months will most likely support ethanol production um, and processing after multiple years of losses. So you got ethanol on the corn side, you got bio, biodiesel policies, driving investments on the soybean side, those two crops become, become important. So that's really on the, on the pricing side, the, the prices will stay really high from our perspective. The flip side of that is we also see high, you know, rising costs on, on farming operations. You know, with fertilizer and chemical costs going going up significantly and, and really showing no signs of retreating for 2022, profitability might be up, uh, but probably not as as much um, as you would expect with the prices because costs are also following with inflation, with you know farmers actually being a little risk averse. And I'll share some of the some of the poll numbers that we 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 have on investments on farm equipment. Uh, with interest rates going up, we believe costs are going to remain high. Grain prices are going to be remain high. There's an opportunity for a higher profit in years past, but but quite frankly, you won't see a significant increase in profit. At least that's what farmers are telling us. So those are the key takeaways. Like I said, I encourage you to really uh, download the report. There's a lot additional details about the markets. You know what we think is going to happen. You know a lot of numbers and surveys that we've done. Uh, so I do encourage you, you know, to take time to do that. So, man, let's go to the next slide. This couple of visuals. This is one, right? This this bull market, it hasn't really started with just the Russian invasion. It's been going on for the last 18 months because of the of the areas that I that I just mentioned, right? You can see it. We expect that bull market to run, you know, a little longer, uh, and maybe even, you know, years uh, in front of us. Go to the next slide, real quick, Meg. So this is an interesting one. We actually polled our customers, and this is a plug that I'm going to do for both uh, the Canadian farmers and U.S. farmers that are on this call uh, and community builders of both countries. Um, these polls are so important as we send it out to you guys. Take the time to answer because what allows us to do is aggregate the data and then put information out to all of you to help you make decisions. And one that we have done is we asked, Farmers, are you going to see, you know, change to your fertilizer practices, right? Um, and we had almost 3,000 answers on this on this poll in the U.S. And you can see an interesting trend. Uh, states where uh, where you know there's high efficiency of converting nitrogen into corn, you're not you most likely are not going to see a whole lot of changes, right? And and these states are Minnesota, Iowa, Nebraska, and Illinois. They can achieve high corn yields uh, versus the amount of nitrogen applied. You know, in these states, you usually get one one, meaning one pound of corn uh, production equals for for every pound of one one pound of nitrogen applied. As you go into states where uh, you know the yield and the production is a little less. What we're starting to see is they're looking at changing their fertilizer practices, either apply less, perhaps plant a different crop, or perhaps utilize biological products uh, that give them a different way to, you know, to provide nutrients to the plant, um, therefore, you know, managing their costs a little bit. So those, those are the polls. If you look at the areas in green, those are large corn states, you know, you know, 50-50 likely to change a fertilizer as you look at you know farther to the right those are you know small corn states they are likely to change their fertilizer practices to you know a different crop perhaps to less fertilizer 
or to use biological products. Let's go to the next slide real quick, Meg. So if you think about the, the other side of the equation, which is really cost, right? We've seen you know, farm chemical prices going up from last year, about this time last year to this year, significantly, right? And I'm, I'm showing some of the key products that have gone up and, and how much they have gone up. Uh, the, the main reason for that is, is the factors that, that we just talked about, uh, as well as some government uh, controls that limited, you know, coal power, electricity, uh, force, you know, the true supply chain disruption given the pandemic, um, you know, now we're seeing even force majeure uh, of one of the main providers of glyphosate. That's actually putting a lot of pressure on, on you know, crop chemical prices. We don't see that softening in the near future. Therefore, we would encourage you to really look at, you know, the gray markets, how they're doing relative to the costs, and make a very informed decision. This year is going to be about how, how well you control your costs and how well you can capture the, the high prices. And if you do a good job doing those, those two things, you'll be able to generate an increase, you know, profit for your farm operations. Let's go to the next slide, um, Meg, and I'll turn it over here for a minute. So with that state of the union, if you will, uh, on our industry, uh, what we actually want to showcase to you guys is, and I'll, I'll turn it over to the team here in a minute, is how strong our supply supply position is on some key products that you, you, you might be looking and needing for the season, how our new online experience has been enhanced, so you can see hence, so you can see how easy it is to do business with us on, on our online store, as well as our advanced logistics network that has been put together in the last 18 months that allows us to get more products to you on time. So 